everyone, <laughs> I'm Timmy Scott, and if you're new here, welcome. You're probably wondering what I was thinking about. Well, as you can tell by the title of this video, I want to talk about positive thoughts. I've been thinking about this for a while. Now, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out communication and social skills. No. This is still geared toward Jehovah's Witnesses. I've been thinking about this, and this really ties into my life growing up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, unfortunately. Jehovah's Witnesses don't have communications and social skills. Let me break this down for you why I know what. And you can Google this for yourself. Just easily Google communication skills and it'll be right there. The list will be right there. They're not friendly. I'll give a few tips. They're not friendly. They don't, they're not open mind. They don't have an open mind. They're, they don't have any empathy. And the social skills part, they don't accept people. They don't respect them. That's just unfortunately how it is for them though. That's just unfor the unfortunate reality in their religious cult. And I know a lot of ex-Jehovah's Witness friends of mine or the ones that come and watch my videos will con confirm this in the comment section. <laughs> wow, I sound like a tipper. Anyway, <laughs> I'll give you a few tips. Again, they're not friendly, they don't show empathy, and they don't have an open mind in the communication skills part. And in the social skills, they don't accept and respect people. This is where I'm going to, again, break this down for you. The friendliness, the only reason they pretend they're friendly to the outside world and the public is because they're trained to do that. They're trained, they're brainwashed and programmed to train to act friendly so they can leave what you call a good first impression. That doesn't work. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Because I'm going to break it down again, like I said. And those who have families that aren't Jehovah's Witnesses and the ones that, well, obviously are, they're supposed to shun them. And within that family arrangement, how that is supposed to work. And again, this is where the friendliness comes into play. They're, they don't accept people, whether if they're gay or another religion or whatever. They can't accept them. The only reason they say they do is because they want to leave, what we all know, a first good impression. And it's unfortunate that they have to do this because they're, pro they're brainwashed and programmed again to act that way. They don't have an open mind and they don't show empathy for others. The only reason, again, they have to is because they're controlled that way. That's the mind control, and that's how the system works in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I, again, I remember as a Jehovah's Witness, for those who are new that just clicked onto this video, I had a brother who was a Jehovah's Witness. I have a couple siblings, but whatever. I had an older brother who got disfellowshipped for doing stuff that wasn't wasn't technically common back then or legal back then, but it wasn't bad. It was just not really common and legal. Anyway, I remember my dad telling me he wasn't allowed to talk to him, no matter how much help he needed for with the problems he was having. Still did it anyway, but whatever. <laughs> I didn't understand why back then. But that's because, again, I was always around my parents and stuff like that. And being told to be this and that and not allowed to do this and that. You get the idea. Pretty much a sheltered life. <sighs> again, and now it makes sense growing up and being out for a little better than five years. I get it. I get why they... Again, why they have to be a certain way. It's unfortunate I can't convince them otherwise because they're too brainwashed 
they're under too much mind control to be able to get the fact that they hurt the ones they love. They can't understand it and they won't understand. They have no sympathy for the ones around them that want to love them, but they're not allowed to because they're trained to act that way. But as I mentioned before, I think they lead a double life. They wear a mask. I remember that as a Jehovah's Witness growing up, leading a double life. When these people are doing the same thing, but again, that's the part of mind control, excessive amount of mind control, is they wear a mask. They lead a double life. And meaning that is what I just explained. Meaning they'll go out in the public, they'll tell people, oh, we, we don't shun people, we accept them for who they are. Again, that's their, just their way of trying to convince people to convert them into becoming something they aren't. The people they're converting anyway. The people that are outsiders and try to convince them that way. Again, the communication skills part. They're not friendly. They're, they're not really friendly. They don't really show empathy for anyone within their family unit. No matter who it is, they don't have an open mind. And in the social skills part, they don't accept really accept people. They don't respect them. It's I I get it. It's just frustrating that they will never get it. So I just try to make videos expressing my feelings to ex over witnesses who want to, I guess, get it for those who don't get. You, you can leave a comment for those who are extra witnesses watching this. You can leave a comment if you do get it. I'm sure you do. I'm just saying for those who don't get it. I get it. I've been really thinking and understanding why they are the way they are. They don't have communication and social skills that they think they portray. They twist people's words around and they convince them and stuff like that. And again, this goes into the whole shunning play. They even shun the ones they love because that's what they're trained to do. They don't care if they hurt them because that's their, uh, that's the opposite of empathy. That's the opposite of them portraying shallow emotions. And again, that's where I get it. That's where I understand why they are the way they are. I don't like it. I don't like the fact that they have to do that, but I get it. I can rebuild myself, and I have been, rebuilding myself to a better positive life for myself. Being able to care about the others, emotional well-being of others. And that goes for anyone, particularly, being able to just care about the emotional well-being of others. That's how it should be. It's human nature to show emotions. It's human nature to be open-minded. As long as you're not hurting anyone. But unfortunately, that's what Jehovah's Witnesses do. They can't and will not see the fact that they hurt the ones they love. And they probably will most likely never get it. It's unfortunate, like I said, it's unfortunate and frustrating that they'll never be able to get it. But they can't and they will not get it. And again with the whole shunning thing. They'll pretend to make a good first impression, play a friendly put a put on a friendly mask, pretend to convince people that they don't shun anyone when they really do. For those who again are thinking about converting, don't fall for that. When you get in there and get baptized and stuff like that. They'll pretend to love you and care about you and make it seem lavish and all this stuff. And then if you decide to leave eventually, like you're in there for long periods of time and it's all convincing and stuff like that. But when you leave, then they shun you. Then they kick you out. It doesn't matter if your friends or family is with them. They make you feel guilty. That's their shallow emotion part that comes into play. But again, they can't get it. They never will get it. 
for me, at least, I've been doing a lot of self-reflection on myself and their way of life, how they live and how they act. Unfortunately, there's more often than not Job's witnesses who don't really take after that negative, heavy negative trait. For me, most of my childhood was blur. And, I, and I'm actually glad most of it is. There, again, there's some things that I'm going to remember because I was born into that. And I'm probably going to live with it till the day I die. But I'd rather be able to just more self-reflect on myself and how they lived. Seeing that they'll never be able to get it. And I'll be, I want to be able to reflect on myself, my emotions. Another half of positive thoughts I've learned, though, being a little too open. Being a little too open to people, whether it is your friends or whether it is your family or friends. You can try to be, you when, if you have an innocent trait and don't realize it, I've had people tell me I have an innocent trait, and I do. But the only problem is, I was too open to people. I used to be too open, and I didn't realize that was a bad thing. And this goes not just for my, not just for the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is a part of the unfortunate communication and social skills that I didn't see that I had a problem with. That I, w I couldn't see it, I guess. It was, there was still a lot of things that, again, I carried from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Again, this could go for anybody, not just Jehovah's Witnesses, but this video is mostly for them. Anyway, this is a part of self-reflection. I've been realizing that, again, I have an innocent trait, unfortunately. And I used to be too open to people about things. And, but I couldn't see it because I was vulnerable and naive. And I've been working on it, trying not to have that as much as I used to. And this is where the self-reflection part comes in. Realizing, again, I used to be too open to people. My family, friends, it backfired on me because I put too much trust into them. And it's unfortunate that I did that. And I learned from that mistake. And everyone learns from mistakes. That's a part of human nature. It's a part of life. But you can also self-reflect on yourself, realizing certain things. Now, I'm not saying a lot of people at carry an innocent trait or whatever aren't too open. But to those that do carry an innocent trait, think about that. Realize that it might have backfired on you. People backstabbing you. And you don't know why it happened. But that's a part of the communication skills coming. I mean, you can be open, just not too open to the point where you wind up getting backstabbed from the people around you and that you come in contact with, because they can use that against you. And it's unfortunate it's like that. My own family is like that, for an example. I, again, self-reflecting on being too open and stuff like that to them, and then the friends around me that I try to encounter. Now I can be open, just not horribly open. Because, again, it can unfortunately backfire on you in a negative way. That's just me anyway. That's just what I've been self-reflecting on. I wish people could get that. What Jehovah's Witnesses do and how they live. So that's just my thoughts today, my positive thoughts for today anyway, what I wanted to leave to people. This is me expressing my feelings, what I went through as a Jehovah's Witness, looking back at my life, not ever looking back, not going back to that mistake I made. That's the mistakes I unfortunately made, being as a Jehovah's Witness. I didn't want it, but I was left with no choice. That's just what I wanted to put and talk about and put out to anyone that 
would get the concept and understand it. Sorry if this video is a little long, but I just wanted to leave a little insight again about the Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, this goes for anybody, but again, this goes hand in hand with the positive thoughts, the communication, and social skills. For this video, anyway. If I've left anything out, I'm going to leave it in the description and leave your insight. For my ex Jehovah's Witness friends, Thank you for being positive and supportive to me. It really means a lot that you're willing to go out of your way. Show your emotional well-being and supporting me and making me feel more confident and better about myself than when I was. <laughs> I'm going to leave more links in the de or not links, sorry. <laughs> more thoughts in the description, whatever comes to mind. And this video shout out of the day goes to Melanie G. Melanie, if you're watching this, which I know you will, this shout out goes to you. And if you really want a shout out, leave a positive comment. Leave some good feedback and stuff. Again, I know my video is a little long, but I just wanted to put stuff out there because that's me expressing my feelings. I never thought I'd make a video this long before. And again, Melanie, thank you again for always supporting me leaving me positive thoughts, your feedback on the children's witnesses, what you think of them, and going hand in hand with it. And if you want a positive feedback shout out, leave them in the comments, because every support helps. I help you out, or you help me out, I help you out. That's how it works. That's how communication works, <laughs> as you can tell. So, I don't know. Anyway, like I said, I, I never thought I'd make this video a video this long, but I wanted to. So to those who had a listening ear and can understand what I have explained, which I know I will get positive feedback to, all that good stuff. If you, again, want a positive shout, positive shout out, leave it in the comment and I may shout you out, which I will. Even if it's, even if it's just at least in this video, I've already got some others I'm going to shout out in future videos, but in this one, it goes to Melanie G. Thank you again, and with that being said, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.